All right, so welcome back, Ranger fans and Carolina Hurricanes fans. This is John Chick with Locked On New York Rangers, joined by Jared Ellis of Locked On Carolina Hurricanes for a special crossover edition here. And uh, Jared, how are we doing today, buddy? We're doing good. How are you? Uh, good, man. Really excited for this game. You know, obviously the Rangers and Canes at the top of the Metro Division. This is something of a battle for first place. I know the Canes have a couple of games in hand, but uh, yeah, no, it's great to, uh, to be doing this and uh, previewing this matchup here. Yep. As always, it's always great to cross over with you up there in New York. Yes, sir. Uh, so I got to know, I mean, it, it's kind of unfortunate. I feel like a lot of crossover additions have to start with this question, but you know, COVID's obviously an issue around the league right now. And a lot of players in and out of the lineup for a lot of different teams. Uh, how have the Canes been faring with this? Have they been hit hard by it or, or not too bad compared to some other teams? Uh, they had their wave at the end of 2021 where they were hit really bad with it. And they're basically playing with half of the Chicago Wolves, but they fared well there. They won all those games. And Jacob Slavin, he just came off of COVID protocol. He's his return game was the seven to one beatdown against Boston. Showed no signs of rust whatsoever. But going into this game, we have two guys on COVID protocol. We have Martin Natchez and Jordan Martinuk, who just went into COVID pro protocol the morning of this recording so natures is definitely the one that hurts offensively and on the score sheet but jordan martinuk he's the one that hurts with the intangibles yeah he's a fourth line grinder but he is an amazing leader on this team we've all seen the pictures and videos of him basically being a coach there on the bench and on the ice yeah, I mean, not too bad, I suppose, compared to some of the other teams in this league. And, you know, for the Rangers, you mentioned that the Canes had their uh, their wave at the end of 2021 there. I feel like the Rangers are just starting to come out of their wave a little bit. You know, Panarin had to miss a couple of games. Uh, Strom, Lindgren, Igor Shesterkin was out of the lineup. Uh, Gerard Gallant and assistant coach Mike Kelly, they all missed time. But, uh, you know, the Rangers recently had a 3-2 and two road trip and then had a heck of a win against the Maple Leafs at home last night. And for the most part, uh, they're pretty healthy. And compared to some of the other teams around the league, I mean, I can't complain too much. I, I think they've uh, dodged some bullets as far as, you know, as far as COVID is concerned. Definitely agree there. It could definitely be a lot worse. And let's hope it doesn't get that way. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, something I wanted to uh, to ask you about, obviously, you know, we got the revelation of the all-star teams not too long ago. And, you know, naturally, uh, you know, fans of this team want that guy in and how can that guy be on the team? You know, you know how the debate goes when it comes to these all-star teams. But, you mm -hmm. know, I'm looking at the the Metro and the Canes send Sebastian Ajo and Freddie Anderson, obviously both very deserving. Um, are you good with just those two representing uh, the Canes or was there anybody there that you felt like maybe got snubbed a little bit and should have uh, made that all-star squad? I definitely feel those two are probably the most deserving on the team. They have been absolutely insane this year. Freddie's, you know, Vesna contender right now, Sebastian Ajo. I predicted at the start of the season that we'd see him make a return to the All-Star game this year since they were going to have it, and now they are. Uh, but I would say the other two guys I think maybe you know, could have gotten in would have been our – Last man in nominee, Andre Sveshikov, and then Jacob Slavin. The guy is so underrated, and he does not get the recognition he deserves. I guess it's just because he's not flashy or anything like that. It's just, yeah, he's a good defensive defenseman, and he's one of, if not the best defensive defenseman in the league. We saw that when he was out with COVID, just – how much he does for the team holes that he plugs up and flaws that he covers up there on the blue line. But he made it to all-star game a couple years ago when Dougie was out with a broken leg. So he's gotten his all-star recognition before, but nice to, be, to see him get it again, but it's fetch as well. Also want to see him get there eventually as, as, as well. Yeah, and for the Rangers, I mean, I don't have too many complaints. I mean, Adam Fox and Chris Kreider both made it. It would have been a crime if either one of them didn't get in, uh, given the seasons that they're having right now. I mean, I was I took a little bit of exception to Tristan Jerry getting in over Igor Shesterkin. I mean, I think Igor 
firmly in the uh, Vesna race. I mean, there's a lot of goalies having some pretty unbelievable seasons so far this year. But, you know, you mentioned the last man in vote, and it was actually won by Mika Zibanejad. But uh, due to what he described as a personal issue in Sweden, uh, he's not going to end up playing in the game. So I don't know. Have they named a last man in in, in replacement for Mika? I mean, maybe your guy Svechnikov can still get in. I haven't. They seen did. It part. was it yeah. wasn't Svech. It was number two. It was guy from the Penguins. I forget who their nominee was, but it was uh, was him. it Gensel? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's the one getting in. So Svech wasn't even number two. Maybe it was That's- number three. I don't know. That's too bad, man. Svechnikov's a heck of a player. But, uh, you know, you mentioned Freddie Anderson a second ago. And, I mean, I'm just, like, marveling at the season that he's having. I mean, he's always been a solid goalie. But I was looking up his stats. You know, he's got, got a goals against average of 199. That's almost a full goal better than he had uh, last season with Toronto. I mean, were you expecting this kind of, you know, frankly, dominance from Freddie Anderson when, when he came over to the team this season? I mean, I, I got to believe he's kind of exceeding expectations, at least to an extent. Absolutely not. I was not expecting this in the slightest. I was a bit hesitant on this signing, to be completely honest, with him and Auntie Ranta as well, because we went into the offseason letting all of our goalies go. Peter Mrazek left in free agency. James Reimer left in free agency. Alex Delkovich got traded to Detroit. And I, I got, you know, the two UFAs, leaving parting ways but ned was the one that i was the most confused and as a fan upset about because for so many years basically ever since camelard's prime ended we hadn't been able to find a true long-term solution in between the pipes cam was having to play hurt when he shouldn't he was getting overworked overplayed and he never had a good backup. Scott Darling didn't work out. And so many other guys never worked out. And then you get, obviously, you had Peter and Curtis Macklin, Peter and James. And those were good, but they were never a long-term solution. So then when Ned finally got an extended time in the NHL, rather than just like one or two games here and there, he made the most of it. He was a Calder finalist. It was absolutely insane. His numbers were better than the Vezina winner. Mark andre Fleury. Uh, so whenever they traded him and he signed for less than he was asking for here in Detroit, I was very upset because I figured, okay, you could have him and Freddie or him and Auntie Ranta. But now that the season's gone, yes, Ned has done great stuff up in Detroit, really helping them out up there, given it is Detroit. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I've really had to eat my words. I was really wondering what Freddie Anderson we would get. Would we get the top tier goaltender that we had seen in the past, or we get the one that we'd seen the past couple of seasons in Toronto that, you know, was hurt and just not the goaltender that he once was, but he is came back even better than he was before. And All these years after the Hurricanes originally drafted him like 10 years ago, he's finally playing here. (laughs) How about it? Um, You know what, though, man? I mean, you weren't the only one who was wrong about that. I remember we did a crossover in uh, in the offseason. I think we were talking about a couple of the Rangers that uh, joined the Hurricanes. But, you know, Mm -hmm. we mentioned uh, the goalie situation. I mean, you said it. Nijelkovic is firmly in the mix for the Calder last season. And you go from him to Freddie Anderson, who, you know, has had his ups and downs. But, I mean, neither one of us could really make any sense out of, uh, out of that move there by, by the Hurricanes. You know, going from a guy who is very young, has the look of a franchise goalie, to, you know, a little bit of a retread in, in Freddie Anderson. But as you just mentioned, he's been absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, I, f- I figure we can continue talking about this, continue breaking down this matchup in just a second. But first... Just want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers and Locked On Carolina Hurricanes is brought to you by Built Bar. It is the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, and most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. 
and there's so many flavors to choose from. Coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, and many, many more. In fact, Built is always coming out with new, limited-time flavors, so check Built.com often to see what's new. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And uh, Jared, while we're on the subject, man, do you, do you have a favorite Built Bar flavor? I've been asking everybody this. Peanut butter brownie, the absolute goat. It's up there. It's definitely in my top three. I would go with the mint brownie. I'm a big brownie fan, so you really see. Can't go I don't want to. I don't want to be eating toothpaste. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. They're they're pretty good, but uh, any anything brownie related, you can pretty much sign me up. But uh, yeah, I, I figure you know we'll continue uh, breaking down this matchup here, and uh, you know we talked about Freddie Anderson, but. He's not uh, the only Canes goalie that's having a solid season. I got to ask about my former Rangers because he got about six of them there. Uh, Antti Ranta, I mean, do you like what you've seen from him? I think with him, it's just kind of a case of staying healthy, is it not? Yeah, it's really a thing of staying healthy. That was my main concern with him this year of can he stay healthy? Main concern with both of them, but, you know, they're both on the wrong side of 30, both injury history, and Freddie's, been able to stay healthy for the most part. I think he had like one, I think he had COVID protocol and that was it. Uh, But Auntie Ronte, he's been having a bit of a go of it. He had his concussion earlier in the season, recovered fine from that. But now it's been a lower body injury. Don Waddell said that it was, it wasn't long-term injury, but it also wasn't day to day. He didn't really know how long he'd be out. But whenever he's been in, with the exception of, I think, like one or two games, he's been pretty solid for the Hurricanes. Really no complaints there. No, that's good to hear. I mean, I always liked him when he was on the Rangers. I mean, granted, he was only here with two for two seasons, but, uh, you know, great backup to Henrik Lundqvist. And uh, for a very brief period of time, he was on such a hot streak. You know, Henrik had to miss a couple of games, and then he came back, and they actually gave Ronta a couple more starts. I mean, that that's how good he was at that time. And You know, Henrik was still Henrik. He was not in decline mode at all there. But uh, sometimes, you know, a goalie catches fire in such a way that uh, you can't even possibly think about benching them. Um, And something else that I wanted to ask you about, man, you know, uh, trade deadline, obviously, still close to two months away. But, I mean, the Canes and the Rangers both putting themselves in position to be buyers here. Is there anybody that you would like to see the Canes maybe make a run for? Anybody that's been out there on the, uh, the, the trading block? Or is there a certain position that you think that they could uh, stand to add and make the team better? Bring Ned back. But no, that's honestly just a joke there. Uh, really nothing. But I actually, no, you know, I say that as a joke, but Detroit wouldn't give him up. But honestly, uh, maybe I, I almost want to say, uh oh goalie uh not like a starting caliber anything like that just bring in like a solid backup because goalie has been the one issue this year not in an issue of playing bad but staying healthy because there was at one point a uh, couple of weeks ago it was from the nhl level all the way down to the echl level Frederick Anderson and Alex Lyon were the only two healthy goalies. Wow. Between either being hurt or COVID protocol. And I think that they could stand to add a little bit more goalie depth, especially now with the taxi squad. I know they say it'll be gone after the all-star game, but let's be real. I think it'll get extended as with, just the way the NHL is right now and the issues they're having, I could see them going for like a backup goaltender just because of Auntie Ranta's health. Can he be healthy one in time for the playoffs? He obviously will be, but well, at least with this injury, but can he be healthy in time for the playoffs and stay healthy through it? Because I don't see Alex Lyon being a goalie for the NHL playoffs. I don't see Jack LaFontaine being a NHL playoff goalie. I just don't see that happening. And of course, you've got your other guys down in the HL and ECHL. They're obviously not going to be NHL playoff goalies. 
that would be the one move that I might would make for the Hurricanes. If they, but honestly, if they didn't feel they need to make that move, then don't make the move. Don't make a move just for the sake of making a move because it's not necessarily one that they absolutely have to do, but it's one that may, may or may not work in the long run. No, that makes sense. I mean, the Canes have a very deep team, and uh, sometimes you have to just kind of go with the old adage, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It obviously seems like uh, they have a lot of chemistry there, and like I said, a lot of depth, and they're a team to to make a, a, threat, a threat to make a run every single season. Uh, it's funny you mentioned goalie because I'm kind of torn myself uh, when it comes to the Rangers, not Igor. I mean, he's going to be the man for hopefully the next decade plus, but they have Alex Georgiev backing him up, and he got off to just a miserable start this season. I mean, he was playing very sparingly. Uh, Igor was the workhorse, but then Igor got hurt. He was also on the COVID list for a time, and Georgiev has really picked it up since then. He's a restricted free agent at the end of the season, and there's two schools of thought there, right? You know, do you trade him now while his value is high and get something uh, nice in return for him? You know, maybe a team takes a chance on him as potentially being its franchise goalie, or, you know, with Igor Shesterkin having a couple of injury issues early in his NHL career, do you cling tightly to Alex Georgiev and kind of look at him as uh, plan B going into the playoffs if Igor, um, you know, uh, gets injured or anything like that? It's, it's, it's a tough call. I've kind of gone back and forth on it on, on, on this podcast. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you don't want to end up in the Stanley Cup playoffs with guys from your AHL team or your ECHL team, you know, starting a, a must-have game six against, you know, the Washington Capitals or somebody. Yeah, I know. It's definitely just one of those where I, it, would, it wouldn't it would hurt to make the move, at least you wouldn't think, but it's also one that isn't necessary for them to do this. I think we're both in the same boat because if they're both healthy, I think both teams are good. We don't need to make a move, but that's the thing, Kane, you count on your AHL goalie to – when that must have game six or game seven, you know? So it, it's definitely a, an interesting predicament for both of us to be in, especially after the past several years, you know, both teams not necessarily being the best, you know, the hurricanes, they've came back up sooner than the Rangers, but we have been used to both teams kind of not being the greatest. And now here we are at the top of the Metro division. Yeah. I'm wondering, if, do we even need to make a move at the trade deadline? Yeah, it's a pretty crazy situation to be in. I mean, with the Rangers, I'd still like to see them make uh, maybe one or two moves, bring in, uh, you know, some people have been talking about defensemen and, you know, Jacob Chikrin's name comes up every now and then. Um, I think the Rangers are good at defensemen. I mean, their top four D-men, I would say, are up there in the NHL. I mean, I know the Canes have great defensemen too, but I don't know how many teams in the NHL can boast a top four quartet that's better than Fox, Lindgren, Truba, and Miller. Um, you could maybe add a depth guy, but then again, they've got a, this kid, Braden Schneider, up from the AHL. He was a first-round draft pick. Uh, he looks really, really good so far. So I don't think defenseman is really necessary, but uh, if you look at the Ranger depth chart, Jared, and I don't know how familiar you are with, you know, the ins and outs of the Ranger depth chart, um, but they're very thin at right wing, and that's due to a magnitude of reasons. Obviously, they trade Pavel Buchnevich in the offseason, Colin Blackwell taken by the Kraken, uh, Vitaly Kravtsov throws a fit. He's back in the KHL now. And uh, Sammy Blaze out for the season as well due to a slew foot from P.K. Subban. So uh, they've really had to scramble at that position. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, a reunion with our old buddy J.T. Miller. I was always a big fan of him. And uh, one of the nice things about him is he can play any of the three positions. So, uh, you know, Miller Miller's pretty high on my list. And then you see a couple off-the-wall ideas like Claude Giroux. I, I just can't even picture him wearing a Ranger sweater. But I suppose crazier things have happened, have they not? Yeah, they definitely have had crazier things happen we yeah. uh, we saw it during the off season with our successful offer sheet you never see that yeah that was that was wild that was wild. how's that working out for you guys by the way he yes for you, he's coming along he's definitely still settling in it, i wasn't expecting him to you know, go off and be an all-star or anything like that. he's really kind of settling into you know fourth line center and just finding his way obviously the hurricanes are have a great track record of developing young talent and on the flip side montreal had a very bad track record of that so you're kind of having to break some old habits that developed up there in montreal and you know 
his growth was kind of stunted. So you're trying to catch him back up, you know, yeah. and gives confidence. He went off for two goals in that Boston game that we mentioned earlier. So I think, you know, build his confidence up and, you know, just teach him the right way of doing things. He's under a great head coach and assistant coach and Rod Brenmore and Tim Gleason. He's on a great team with guys to learn from like Jordan Stahl, Sebastian Ajo, Jacob Slavin, Brady Shays, Ian Cole, Derek Stepan. I mean, the list just goes on of great guys to learn from. And like I said, his head coach was an absolute beast at center back in his day. And his team captain is a beast at center nowadays. So he's got some great folks to learn from. So he's going to come along. It's just one of those things. You can't break those old habits overnight. Fair enough. Uh, I figure, you know, we can keep talking about this. Jared, do you want to let everybody know about Bet Online real quick, though? Yes, of course, because <laughs> Bet Online would like to wish you and everyone else a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for the best sports wagering action for 2022. With a new year comes a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you have to do is use the promo code locked on to get started and receive that 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, and even your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, John, I got to ask you. It's the question that everyone wants to ask. What do the Rangers have to do to win this game? I mean, I, I think, you know, just kind of picking up where they left off against Toronto, they got off to an absolutely miserable start in that game. They were down two to nothing less than four minutes in. They had taken uh, a couple of undisciplined penalties and, uh, you know, really dug themselves a hole and were able to come back. I don't think that, th I mean, that's not a recipe for success against anybody, let's be honest. But a team like the Canes that's very physical, uh, you, you fall behind early. And we saw that in that very brief playoff series a couple of years ago. You just don't want to play from behind against this team because they tend to just suffocate you. They're very aggressive defensively. Uh, I think the first goal, not that it's not a big thing under normal circumstances, but in a game like this, I think it's really important. Um, I just don't see how you can uh, fall behind early, have a slow start, and live to tell about it against this Canes team given the style that they play. And like I said, we saw that in that playoff series. The Rangers got off to some rough starts. They were playing from behind for basically that whole series. And it's not like the Canes won every one of those games six to one or anything like that. But, um, you know, it just felt like they were in total control. They, they would get a lead and they would just kind of lean on you until you fell over kind of deal. Um, so I, I think a, a stronger start in this game is going to be absolutely huge for the Rangers. And I'm also hoping that uh, Igor Shosturkin is in net. I, I was checking the schedule and the Rangers and Canes both play a back to back. It's, it's the first half of a back to back for both of these teams. So I'm kind of hoping we get Igor versus Freddie. Both teams can uh, put their best foot forward and, uh, you know, put, do what they can to uh, come away with first place in the Metro division. But how about you, Jared? I mean, what, what do the Canes have to do? I definitely agree with the keeping the momentum going from the previous game. Our previous game was that absolute dominating performance against Boston, five goal first period. Yeah. And keeping that momentum going. I mentioned it briefly at the tail end of today's episode of what the Hurricanes need to do to beat the Rangers. And I said, keep that momentum going, keep building off of that one against Boston before that, the win against Vancouver, just keep building off of that. The, and don't take stupid penalties because that has started to rear its ugly head again for the Hurricanes. It was really bad at the beginning of the year. They got better about it. And here over the past few games, really ever since a game or two before that really ugly one against Columbus, they've really just been taking dumb penalties. And it happened in that Boston game in that second period. Boston arguably won that second period. But thankfully, uh, Freddie stood tall and defense did their job and didn't allow any goals. But don't take stupid penalties and keep the momentum going. And I say it in a lot of these games against top teams, 
score first. Given it's not always going to be that way. I mean, we saw on New Year's Day, we Columbus blew a four nothing lead against us. So it's not always a guarantee. And then there was a game against Calgary as well. We scored first, but then it ended up going into overtime because again, scoring first doesn't necessarily always mean it, but definitely a game like this, that first goal can really make the difference because if Igor is playing, you may not get a whole lot past him. Same with Freddie. Yep. If he's playing, you may not get a whole lot past him. Goals are going to be at a premium for sure. I would think at least, I mean, we'll say this and then watch the final score is like six to five, but mm-hmm. um, you know, a player that I wanted to ask you about, and I'm not going to ask about all the former Rangers because we'd be here all day, but uh, Tony D'Angelo, obviously very controversial pickup for the uh, Canes. I know we talked about that a little bit in the off season, at least on paper, you know, going by the amount of points that he has, he's had a good season for you. Has he mostly behaved himself and actually managed to keep a low profile against all odds? I mean, it kind of feels that way. Yes. Uh, I, uh, when was it? I think it was back in November. I had team reporter Walt Ruff on. I asked him that very same question. Like, Hey, what is going on there? Has he been true to his word? And so far he has been, there's been little comments and whatnot he's made in press conferences and whatnot that you could definitely say is like a dig at some folks but outside of that he's behaved for the most part I haven't heard anything come out again other than those sly little I well I'll use the one cuss word for the for the episode smart ass comments and outside of that really nothing uh on the ice yeah he's pretty much done what the hurricanes want him to do there's definitely been some games where there's been some defensive lapses in him in his game very much you mentioned that playoff series in the bubble when sebastian aho just broke his ankles and he fell down in front of the goal there's definitely been some plays like that but out, outside of that stuff right there he's pretty much done everything the hurricanes have wanted him to do that's good to hear. I mean, he's uh, he can obviously very often be his own worst enemy, and uh, hopefully he at least realizes that he really is on his last chance and uh, shouldn't say anything stupid or do anything stupid to uh, cost himself an NHL career. But uh, one other defenseman I wanted to ask you about is actually Brennan Smith. He was somebody that ended up spending, I believe it was four and a half seasons on the Rangers. Didn't necessarily live up to the contract that he was given, but you know, I think he was always a really good teammate. And obviously toward the end of last year, uh, I know you'll appreciate this, Jared, dropping the gloves with Tom Wilson after that whole Mm -hmm. fiasco. Um, And, and, you know, somebody, I think at least early in the season, he was a healthy scratch for you guys a couple of times, but has he done okay? I mean, is he at least keeping up with the play and not being a liability? How's he done so far? He's honestly a bit of a mixed bag to, to be quite on, to be uh, completely honest. I totally forgot how to, speak there for a second my brain just turned to mashed potatoes but (laughs) uh yeah he he's been a bit of a mixed bag he's had some moments where he's looked really good but he's had other moments where he looks like he should be the one getting sent down to the ahl not jalen chatfield not max lejoie not those guys there so it because uh really because i know looking at the advanced stats and all that yeah he's been great which is honestly why i think he's still here but he quite often doesn't really pass the eye test or barely passes it it the biggest thing i have seen from him and a lot of people have mentioned he honestly sometimes struggles to keep up with the hurricanes he because the hurricanes play a notoriously fast game like they you look at our head coach at at his age and how amazing shape he is he conditions the hell out of this team they they can skate with the best of them and outskate pretty much any team in the league and he looks like he struggles with that sometimes and not with the thing of like uh, Jordan Stahl or Derek Stepan, Ian Cole being a little bit older, struggling with it. No, he just he's getting outskated by the old folks. So I think he needs to do something about his conditioning, get himself 
going a little bit more or else we're going to see him being the one sent to the Wolves or assigned to the tax squad. And we're going to see Chatfield, Lejoie, Keen. We're going to see those guys coming in because there have been a lot of Hurricanes fans, myself included, that would much rather see Jalen Chatfield on this team right now than Brendan Smith because when Chatfield was up, when we had all those guys out on COVID protocol at the end of last year, that guy looked freaking awesome. He was doing everything right, and it, it was great. And I know he had gotten hurt, so that was kind of why he got put out, and then he ended up getting sent back to Chicago. But I would love to see him come back because – Right now, Ethan Bear has been getting scratched because he was not playing well after COVID protocol, and Joey Keane had gotten called up. But we'll see how things go from here on out. I definitely would like to see some improvement from Brendan Smith. I'll tell you one former Ranger that is absolutely killing it is Brady Shea. That yeah. man has been on an absolute tear. Yeah, I mean, I remember that trade. It's kind of, what was the trade? I think like a second round pick in exchange for Brady Shea or something like that. But I think the Rangers were mostly just looking to shed a little bit of salary cap. Mm -hmm. I, I, I correctly. Yes, I think it was either, I forget if it was him or the yes for Foss trade, but we sent, uh, uh, who who was it? I, I remember it was one guy from the uh, from the Checkers when they were our affiliate that everyone wasn't happy about. Um, I forget who it was. Yeah. But uh, was it Gautier? Yes, yes, it was yeah, Gautier. Yeah. We sent him up there. It was either in the Brady share or the yes for Foss trade. One of those. Yeah, it, it was definitely one of those. Um, Gautier, man, you know, I'll, I'll kind of bring you up to speed on him, too. I might as well, since he's a former Kane. I think he only played like five games with you guys, but obviously a former first-round draft pick. You know, every season, I, I kind of, uh, he's kind of my dark horse. Like, I feel like there is some skill there. I feel like he's got an interesting blend of speed and strength. I, I have kind of likened him to Chris Kreider, you know, kind of a junior Chris Kreider for one reason or another, this guy just like cannot finish his scoring opportunities. And I don't know what the magic solution is with that. You know, they've kind of moved him around. I think Gerard Gallant has done a nice job keeping him off of the fourth line this season. If you have Gautier in the lineup, he's got to be at least on the third line. Um, Cause there's nothing about his game that streams that he's a fourth liner. But yeah, man, I mean, he gets all these chances. He'll get in deep. He'll get right there on the doorstep and he just cannot get the puck past the goalie. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, I still have not completely given up on him, but it's just frustrating because it feels like there's big time skill there. And we've seen him light up the AHL in the past, but mm -hmm. it just doesn't translate to the NHL for one reason or another. Yep. That's exactly what it was here because everyone loved him. He was a fan favorite yeah. of those guys that kind of go back and forth between the AHL and the NHL. But yeah, it is the same thing here. You know, he lit up the AHL, but, you know, getting to the NHL was really just struggling to finish. He, that was his big issue in the NHL with us as well. Yeah. And it's funny because for a while they had him on the third line and it was with uh, Philip Heedle and Alexi Lafreniere. And I think that, um, you know, that was as, as the entire line, basically, that was their issues. There were, there was a, Stretch of about five, six, seven games there where they were creating scoring chances left and right and just finishing so few of them to the point that it just drives you crazy. But uh, you just hope, obviously, that, you know, sooner or later they'll find that finishing touch because that's really uh, all that they're missing right now. But, um, yeah, Jared, listen, man, this is a ton of fun as always. Uh, do you want to throw out, like, a prediction for this game, a final score, anybody to score for the Canes, anything you got there? Oh, man. Well, one, I definitely – if we go with Igor and Freddie, definitely expect a goaltender's duel. These guys, I personally don't think they're going to allow a whole lot of goals. These are two guys that are in the Vesna conversation. Um, I, for the Hurricanes, I would honestly predict uh, Sebastian Ajo. He's definitely getting on the score sheet for sure. Jacob Slavin's going to just pick back up where he left off. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we see some gloves get dropped and because of our problem child that we have on my team and yeah. the fact that, you know, it's playing the Rangers and definitely some bad blood still there maybe. 
and wouldn't surprise me if we see the gloves get dropped. Yeah, well, I mean, Tony D'Angelo, his uh, time in New York came to a very unceremonious end. And, you know, there was the rumor, you know, there's an altercation uh, in the tunnel. And I, I don't know if we ever got a, a completely clear picture of what happened. But uh, there was the rumor that Chris Kreider was in there and might have even punched D'Angelo. So uh, who knows? Maybe they'll put on a show for us and, and drop the gloves and it's uh, Kreider against D'Angelo. It wouldn't shock I thought me it was all, Igor but... that hit D'Angelo. <laughs> What's that? I thought it was Igor that did it. No, well, I mean, the confrontation was between uh, uh, D'Angelo and Georgiev. Uh, but, yeah, again, okay. I don't know that we ever found out 100% sure exactly what happened. But, um, yeah, I mean, something could definitely well, they know, uh, go down. And they're uh, going to be the playing Rangers. each other. <laughs> what's that? I said they know and they're going to be playing each other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That That's what counts. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as a final score, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, man. I mean, there's these are two Vesna finalists, I, I would imagine, probably at the end of the season. Their names are both going to be in the mix. And, you know, the Rangers have become a more defensively responsible team this season. The Canes have always been a defensively responsible team, at least the last, you know, two, three, four seasons. So I, I think it's going to be low scoring. I could see the Rangers winning this maybe like two to one in overtime or something like that. You know, something along those lines. Yeah, I definitely agree with the score. You know, just vice versa, um, of Fair course. Enough. But yeah, the Hurricanes, I mean, their head coach is a two time back to back selkie winner i mean he and then tim gleason is your assistant coach and runs the defense like this is a extremely good defensive team they always have been ever since brendan moore took over as head coach so i definitely expect expect defense to be a really fun watch in this game from both sides because you hit it on the head new york has definitely stepped up their game on the defensive side of the puck and yeah, the goalies, they're going to goals are going to be a hot commodity in this game for sure. I would just love, we didn't see it last season. I would love to see Andre Sveshkov pull off his signature move, the Svech, well, the we'll Michigan. See. We'll see, man. Whatever you want to call it. it. It's called the Svech, of course, but yeah, because yeah, he is the first one to ever do it in the NHL. You know, Kreider, Kreider tried the Michigan not too long ago. I, I wouldn't be it's surprised. It's called the Svetch, John. It's the Michigan, bro. It's it's the Svetch. Uh, but I'd love to see it. Yeah, I. you know what? I mean, I, I think both of them should be required to try it at least once in the game. How about that? Yeah, I know. One thing I've noticed is ever since he did it both times, Calgary and Winnipeg, whenever he gets behind the net – uh players they'll get right up close to the post on whatever side so he can't go around and do it yeah i've I noticed mean, that teams shut it down real quick because they know that he can do it and he's done it multiple times it's crazy that it's gotten to that point where it's like oh wow we have to defend this like watch out he's gonna try it you know yeah what i mean? know yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy to think about but i honestly i think we're gonna see it again from him at some point because he's definitely stepping up his game and then with him getting his contract that he wanted he obviously didn't necessarily care about the money he cared about the length but he got the biggest contract in franchise history this off season so i think yeah he's gonna have to continue to evolve and continue to be that power forward that everyone wants him to be and everyone knows he is i think we're gonna see it again because he's gotta bust it out he's gotta be unpredictable for sure, man. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I figure we can call it there, but uh, Jared, ton of fun as always, man. Pleasure talking some hockey and uh, enjoy the game. And Rangers fans and Canes fans, we'll see you guys next time. Yep, we'll see you.